Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And a very warm welcome to Friday's edition of the DC Universe Daily. I am Mick, your host with the most. On today's show, we discuss James Gunn's plans for his Superman movie and the DC Universe. And then we talk about the continuing fallout of um, Henry Cavill being replaced as Superman. Lots of different opinions out there, and we'll get into it. Is it going to be damaging for James Gunn, or ultimately, is it a good move, and will it all work out for the best? We will get into it. But James Gunn, bravely, has come back to Twitter the next day after declaring he's replacing the darling of DC fans and Superman fans, Henry Cavill, as Superman. And I respect anyone in this world who's willing to put their head on a chopping block while his production partner, Peter Saffron, continues with his job quietly and efficiently under no pressure. He's coming out on the field. He's getting attacked by fans and some people love him, some people hate him. Everyone has an opinion about James Gunn. And you know, you know, James Gunn has become a little bit of an Ebenezer Scrooge this Christmas time, hasn't he, to some people. But what has he said about his DCU plans and his Superman movie plans that he's writing. He's writing this movie himself. Some people don't think it's a good idea for a co-chair of DC Studios to be doing this, but that's the point. He's the showrunner. Peter Saffron is the kind of suit. He's the corporate guy. He's the producer. It's a, you know, it's actually a very good partnership. That's why James Gunn is there to narratively and creatively lead the DC Universe in the next 10 years. He wouldn't be interested in doing this if he couldn't be the lead creative head, you know, and lead the narrative on this universe. So we do know quite a lot about his plans because he does come onto social media, I think sometimes a bit too much, but he has spoken a lot. He has teased Lobo. So it's clear that Lobo will be in this Superman movie. I do not believe that Lobo will be the main villain or obstacle for Superman in James Gunn's Superman movie. I think Lobo is a middleman. I think that we already know Lobo is an intergalactic bounty hunter. He's a mercenary. So even though he's strong and he can cause some opposition and problems to Superman, you wouldn't imagine him being the main problem. So he will be in this movie. Wouldn't it be mad if we're getting a Superman movie in a brand new universe, if it is a brand new universe, where maybe Jason Momoa plays Lobo and you've got Superman against Jason Momoa? How mad is that going to be? And will it work? Will we just see Aquaman or can it work? Well, he's going to be heavily made up. By the way, there's no confirmation on this. We don't know if Jason Momoa, in fact, is playing Lobo. But he has teased Lobo. In fact, he teased on his first day, Clark Kent, on his first day at work for a comic book panel. We should have kind of known then that he would be heavily involved in developing a Superman movie. In fact, there was a bigger clue on the day we were celebrating 44 years of Superman the movie, where he made a big statement about that movie and about Superman saying it's one of the most important elements of the new DC universe. There was another clue. Finally, he announced he and he alone is writing the Superman movie and he's bravely replacing the darling of DC fans, Henry Cavill, in the role. And that is huge. But what he's actually told us is that this Superman won't be meeting the major characters for the first time. So this looks like it will be an already established DC universe, an already established Justice League. As you know, if you if you if you regularly come onto my channel, I've always talked about if I was doing a DC universe, this is what I would do. I like the first episode of Justice League from Bruce Tick. You have a watchtower. You have a hall of justice. It's all there. It's already established. I don't want 20 movies to set up five to ten Justice League members. I don't want that. I want a ready you know, a readily established DC. I want to see an established Justice League, Watchtower, and Hall of Justice. So it looks like this is what we're going to get, and this is a good idea. You don't, we're not getting an origin story. We're not going to see a story of putting 
together five, six different Justice League members in five or six different movies. It's already there. What does this do with an already established universe? What it does is it doesn't waste any time. You can get into the adventure. We can be introduced to Lobo and different characters. So this will be very, very, I think this is a good way to go from James Gunn. It's all about execution, as I always say. It's got to be done in the right way. But if it is done in the right way, this is good. We don't want more setups. We just want to see an established, upstanding, uprising DC universe. And it does look like that's what we're getting from what James Gunn has said. He's also said that there will be like the, the main DC characters in this universe, but there will be smaller characters we haven't seen before in live action. And I like this. That's a balance. We don't just want to see the Holy Trinity. We want to see Plastic Man. We want to see Green Arrow. We want to see Black Canary. We want it all. Inject it all in my fucking veins. This is what I want to see. Don't worry, we're going to get into the Henry Cavill situation in the second part of this show. So it's not all honeymoons and flowers, but I'm saying this is how I would establish a new DC universe. And I like the idea of an already established DC society. This is going to be great. I want a universe where, you know, in one movie we can see a Legion movie. And, you know, maybe they put the rings on and they come to the past. And they have to fix something in the past and they meet Superman in the past, like they did in that episode of Smallville Legion, written by Jeff Johns quite brilliantly. So these are the kind of things I want to see, an established DC universe. And yeah, I agree with what James Gunn is doing here. And this is very exciting. He's also said that Batman will be a huge part in the DC universe. So that means we're going to have a third Batman introduced to current DC live action. Maybe he'll be a younger Batman this time. Maybe he won't be so old. Or, it, I mean, it, and it all depends what's going on with the DCEU in context to the new DC universe, if any of that's connected. Is there still an opportunity for Ben Affleck to play Batman? I, I don't know. Because he's not exactly saying, is it? Keeping the things he said that worked and improving the things that didn't. As I said yesterday, clearly... He feels Henry Cavill doesn't work as Superman, so he's done away with that element. But in terms of Ben Affleck, and this is very, very interesting, actually, that he came out and said to a fan, yes, we're looking for a film um, in the DC Universe for Ben Affleck to direct. And I've already been in a meeting with him. He, he said, like, on that day or the day before, he had met with him. That's absolutely insane. So Ben Affleck is going to have some kind of involvement in the future of DC. So is it possible he continues to play his Batman? I have no idea, but it doesn't look like it, does it? How can you have a different Superman, but have Ben Affleck as Batman? So it's very unlikely, but I'm going to call it now. I think Ben Affleck might be directing the next Batman project over at DC Universe. I think that's pretty obvious, and I think people would be very, very happy about that. Yes, but I do feel we will have a younger Batman, and I'm cool with that as well. Now, obviously, we've got quite a young Batman over in Matt Reeves' The Batman Universe. It's all very, very strange, isn't it? Ultimately, you do need a Batman in a, you know, in a contained, you know, connective universe. You can't not have him. I mean, I have spoken about maybe not having one because you've already got you know, you've got the Batverse, you've got Matt Reeves' the Batverse, the, the Batman universe. You've even got a Bruce Wayne in the Joker universe as well. So there's a lot of them. Hopefully they do it in a way where it doesn't confuse people. But I do agree, you do need a Batman. And James Gunn has said Batman will be front and centre in the new universe. He's already spoken about the relationship between Batman and Superman. He's kind of hinted towards it and how it's going to be in his DC Universe. So, although there's red flags scattered all over the place, I feel that James Gunn does want to create something amazing, something fresh, something amazing. But as I say, and I want to be clear about this, and I've, been, I've said this many times, I'm quite happy for a hard reboot and for us to start again. But I won't be happy if they've replaced Henry Cavill and they're not replacing anyone else. So I, be, I will be watching out there and my teeth will be digging in. 
So if Henry Cavill is the only change to this universe, that would be utterly problematic. We'll have to wait and see what James is planning. But a full reboot would get my seal of approval. Because DC live action needs a reboot in this context. The DCEU hasn't worked. It's as simple as that. Maybe it's worked for you personally, but it hasn't brought home the bacon, everyone. And you cannot deny it. And you, are you saying that was all right and that was okay? People saying to me, well, Justice League was okay. Okay is good enough for the MCU. Okay isn't good enough for DC, who have been giving you DC movies since the iconic Sid Man the movie. We expect good fucking shit over at DC. That's why I respect the fact that James Gunn is putting his head on the chopping block. James Gunn isn't perfect. I don't always approve of everything James Gunn does and says. And we have to be clear about something else here as well. James Gunn has been able to create great comic book movies with characters that we don't know so well. But here's the thing. Superman isn't Star-Lord. He is a peacemaker. He isn't the Suicide Squad. Superman is the one of the most iconic fictional characters in history. And James Gunn, as I say, has put his head on the chopping block because if he fails at this, his career is over. So this is a very brave man putting his career at risk. He clearly really wants to do this. Now, there has been in the past, in his early days when he was doing Guardians, he kind of was saying he wasn't really interested in doing DC and Superman. And he has tried to steer away from Superman. In fact, he was given a choice of anything when DC invited him to be involved when he was fired by Disney. He had the opportunity to do a Superman movie and he said no and chose Suicide Squad instead. Now, I think maybe they were asking him to direct the Black Superman movie and I think he said no because he saw it as a very problematic situation where creatively he wasn't going to have any kind of creative freedom himself. Basically, it looks like they wanted him to direct Tanashi Coates' Superman movie. Now, away from James Gunn and his very exciting plans for Superman in the DC Universe, and again, I'm someone who likes to taste something before I judge it. So this is why I will wait and be measured about what James Gunn's doing before I say it's going to be the bestest thing ever. But having an already established DC Universe, an established Justice League, and all of that, is exactly what I've been looking for all along. But there is a rumour that Tanashi Coates and J.J. Abrams' Black Superman is still in active development. But by the way, up till this week, or last week, or the week before, Wonder Woman 3 was still in active development. We now know that Wonder Woman 3 is dead. There may never be a Wonder Woman 3 if DC Universe is a hard reboot, which I cross my fingers it is, but I still have my doubts there. And if it's not, I see multiple red flags. But anyway, apparently Tanashi Coates and J.J. Abrams' Black Superman is still there and is still in active development. But active development doesn't really mean very much. In fact, the next step after it's in active development is for it to be dead. I believe this project is dead because if they're still going ahead with a separate black Superman in a separate universe, then we've got a problem. Now, if James Gunn's Superman is Tanashi Coates' Superman, we have got a huge problem. Because he's not just putting his head on the chopping block, he's just basically organised the date for his execution and his career. So, you know, let's, let's be honest about this. If I was to find out that James Gunn's Superman is an inclusive hire, a black Superman, I'm out. I'm out of soup, uh, basically. Now, if he's doing President Superman, now apparently his Superman's younger, so he can't, or he's doing Val Zod, I might be okay with that. They're from the comics. They're established comic books. But I don't want a black Clark Kent. Clark Kent is white. This doesn't make me an ist and an ism. He is white. It's as simple as that. That is non-negotiable. If you want a black Superman, we have plenty of versions of black Superman in the comics that are not Kal-El, that are not Clark Kent, and it's perfectly fine to establish them. In fact, I'd like to see the white Clark Kent, 
the black Val Zod and the black President Superman standing together in a Superman No Way Home kind of movie. That would be fun. Inject that in my veins at the end of the day. Hopefully, active development is just one of those phrases and that Tanashi Coates and J.J. Abrams' Black Superman is dead because that film is an utter disaster. That film was announced, what, 2019, 2020? It's nearly three years since they announced that movie and they've done jack shit with it. So I don't foresee that movie still happening, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Now let's talk about the continued fallout from Henry Cavill's exit as Superman. An exciting thing was announced for Henry yesterday because apparently he's going to executive produce and starring a Warhammer universe over at Amazon. The problem with Henry is he isn't going to take their woke shit and he will want accuracy and he'll want, he won't, you know, if he says something doesn't work, he wants to be adhered to and listened to. So that's interesting, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Henry Cavill being replaced as Superman. It's very, very interesting because yesterday I saw the aspiring Kryptonian, a very famous Superman fan, female Superman fan of colour on the ITV News at 10 talking about Henry Cavill's exit. Now, she hasn't really spit any bile at um, James Gunn over this or anything, but she's very upset. She adored Henry Cavill as Superman. How many characters can leave a role and you see it on a, on a UK news bulletin and an American one? This is a huge deal, everyone. And you can see what a huge deal it is by the reactions of everyone. So many people devastated, upset. It's like a fucking funeral. You would think that Henry Cavill actually died. That's how upset, depressed and unhappy about this situation that people are. But it just shows me. You know, a UK news bulletin talking about this shows you how huge this decision from James Gunn is. And all I'm going to say, whatever he is doing needs to work. I think there's a high chance of what James Gunn is planning working. And I think so far what the, the tidbits he's leaking about this movie in this new universe do excite me a great deal. Now I know my fellow DC fans, a lot of them, who are Snyderverse stands and Henry Cavill fans and stands as Superman are not happy with James Gunn. And James Gunn is out there for the world to see. People mentioning his historical tweets yet again. I don't understand what one thing has to do with the other. He's faced up to what he said and what he did. He apologised for his conduct. It's done. Even if I hated the ground James Gunn had walked on, I wouldn't be mentioning it. Now, I love busting people's balls on Twitter, always with the laughing emojis, always with the quote tweets. I don't hate anyone in real life or on social media. That's not how I roll. Even if someone's upset me initially and I've said something, about five seconds later, I'm over it. I love everyone. And I just love busting people's balls on social media, especially the propaganda merchants, because I find it funny. But even if I did hate James Gunn, I wouldn't be bringing up his historical tweets. As I say, one thing has nothing to do with the other. But no one ever lets you forget your misdemeanors and sins in life, especially if you're James Gunn. And he has put his head on the chopping block. He's made a huge announcement by replacing Henry Cavill as Superman. And the fallout is huge. And I think what this will damage, I don't think it will necessarily damage the movies and content in his universe, but it's certainly going to damage next year's four movies. I told you a while back, before all this kicked off about Henry, that next year's movies are absolutely irrelevant. They do not matter. Now, if you want to go and see, like, DC movies that don't really matter, that don't have any connective tissue to the future, because it's looking like, like that, I could be wrong, of course. If you just want to see them because you're excited about seeing Aquaman and The Flash and things like that, be my guest. For example, we now know that they gave Henry Cavill a lot of money to shoot a scene as Clark Kent, that Barry would see him in the Speed Force, and that would be it, and that would be his interaction. And actually, we wouldn't even see him, I don't think, interacting with Supergirl like a lot of people wanted to see. And he's just Clark Kent. He's not Superman. I don't think he actually shot anything as Superman. So that tells you 
how creatively bankrupt and how dead next year's movies are, how dead and creatively bankrupt the new DCEU is. Let's be clear, Zack Snyder was a pioneer. He did something very pioneering that you're not going to appreciate, but your kids are going to love it, as Marty McFly said in Back to the Future. But after Zack left, the only pioneering thing we actually got was Aquaman from James Wan and Zack returning for his Snyder Cut of Justice League. The rest of it has been pretty, pretty bland since Zack left, and we have to be honest. Once Zack left, the excitement was over for me, slowly but surely. When I heard about the Flash movie and the multiverse strategy from Walter Hamada, I was hyped. At first, initially, I was hyped about Michael Keaton returning, Sasha Calais as Supergirl, because I mistakenly thought she would be standing alongside her cousin, kal and they would be a team. I didn't realise they were going to use her to replace Superman. The dumbest fucking idea you'll ever see. So... Yeah, so I'm going to watch the movies I haven't watched. I'm going to watch all of them, even the ones that I've seen test screenings for, because test screenings are just a rough cut. That's all they are. They're not the finished movie, so I will consume each movie. Because I'm a DC fan, I love this shit, and I'm on YouTube, and I need to talk about this shit, so I will be watching these movies. I won't be boycotting them, but yeah. What's happened now? Because people know there's not a chance of seeing Henry Cavill probably in any of these movies. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't think we will. And because he's not going to figure in the future, that takes a lot of excitement. Now, Henry Cavill was in a post credit scene for Black Adam, and it didn't seem to do the film many favours. But maybe, as I've said before, maybe the film actually nearly reached 400 million because of Henry Cavill and no other reason. Maybe that's, that's actually true. Maybe they would have made less money if he wasn't involved. One we'll never know. Now, obviously, the Henry Cavill post credit scene was out there for everyone to see. We know that. People were using their camera phones. And later on, they gave us an official look at that post credit scene. So once you've seen it, and if you're not interested in The Rock and Black Adam, you probably wouldn't go and watch or support that movie. I think it's ridiculous if they blamed Henry for the failure of that movie and decided to replace him because of that. I don't believe it. I don't believe that James Gunn is a fan of the Snyderverse, and I believe the uh, Brightburn movie he produced after he was fired from Disney definitely was, let's say, a criticism of Zack Snyder's Snyderverse and use of Superman. And I think his use of Superman will be very different. Everyone is entitled to their opinion about how these characters should be portrayed in live action or in animation or even in gaming. You know, Superheroes and comics are a very passionate business. Iconography, legacy, storytelling, we're all very, very passionate about that. And clearly, James Gunn has different ideas than Zack Snyder on how Superman should be portrayed. And you're going to see a very, very different Superman. That's why he's replacing Henry Cavill. He would have, he would have explained to Henry Cavill, listen, you're just not my idea of Superman. I think we need a younger Superman. We, we're doing a 10-year plan. Maybe you're looking at a 20-year-old Superman, a 22-year-old Superman. And normally, he's around 25 or 30. I've explained before. If he was 25 or 30 in James Gunn's Superman movie, you could easily use Henry Cavill as a 25, 30-year-old Superman. Because even though he's 38, he looks much younger than his years. And no one's going to swallow the replacement of Henry Cavill for the replacement because he's younger if he's only 30 and 25. No. The only way this makes sense if this is a much younger Superman. Because if you're doing a 10-year DC Universe plan and beyond, you need your Superman to be as young as possible. So I believe you are looking at, a character, at an actor, at the very least, at 20 or 23. Now... I don't think we've ever seen a Superman that young in live action. Now, Smallville had a young pre-Superman Clark. That's true. Don't forget, Tom Welling was actually 24 when he was first cast in the role as Clark Kent. And Cl he was literally playing a 15-year-old boy in the pilot. That's what they used to do back then. But if you look closely, you could see Tom's Midnight Shadow. But actually, Tom's performances and the way they made his hair look and him look... He did pass for a teenage boy really, really well. And he actually worked with Tom. At the time, for 10 years, you believed he was who he was playing. One of my favourite versions 
of Kalel. There's no question of, about that. Alongside Christopher Reeves. So we are looking at a much younger Clark Kent and Superman. And I think we are looking at someone from 20 to 23. So as I said earlier, James Gunn isn't a saint. He's not the devil. You're never as good as you are. You're never as good as they say you are, and you're never as bad as they say you are. Some people will throw the facts at James Gunn, but the Suicide Squad was a flop. But it was a very, very entertaining, well-made movie. There's things I can pick apart about it, but I enjoyed the movie. It was a well-made comic book movie. James Gunn, if you're looking for evidence if he can make Superman successful, well, he has taken not-so-iconic characters... But he has taken characters and given them arcs and done a very, very good job with them. The Peacemaker arc in the Suicide Squad and the Peacemaker series, as I've spoken about before, he threaded that arc through beautifully. So he is capable. But as I said earlier, Peacemaker and all these different characters are a different challenge to Superman. Now everybody's watching you, James Gunn. Everybody's talking about you, James Gunn. And you're under a lot of pressure. Now I said yesterday, this is pressure... I would love, because my dream has always been to write and direct Superman, to play the Doctor, to be Doctor Who, and showrun at the same time. These are my ambitions, and even at 50 years old, I'm not giving up on my dreams, because I think I would be a fucking awesome Doctor. I would love to do that. But this is the DC Universe Daily, but we do live in heightened times, and I know that you all have different opinions about James Gunn. Some of you claim you're done. I have faith. I do have faith, but I'm not going to be one of those who tells you how to feel about this. I think potentially James Gunn could do something very exciting, comic book accurate, but exciting from his sense of creativity and the way he does this. Clearly, he must know that, yes, a Superman movie can be humorous. Superman can be humorous. But what you mustn't do is use the type of humor you use, for example, in The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, because you're talking about R-rated fare. But he understands that. And he's not stupid. When Dick Donner got the Superman the movie gig, everyone goes, but he's a horror movie director. We said that about Andy Machete and David F. Sandberg. And look what a great job he did. He made a kid-friendly comic book superhero movie and it absolutely worked. So, you know, putting one stamp on someone is, I think it's limited thinking. And I think he's more than capable of making a great DC universe and a great... Superman movie. In fact, I think James Gunn was always destined to, to be involved with Superman. He tried to steer away from it, and sometimes we do try and steer away from our destiny, but at the end of the day, I do feel that this was his fate to do this, and he's there. He's writing a Superman film, but who is going to direct it? Could it be that James Gunn has to launch his own franchise on his own by writing and directing Superman. It's clearly his vision. Wouldn't it be better served if he directs this movie too? I don't know. Because Superman is huge. It does look like Superman will be launching another DC franchise. And quite right too. There's no bigger or better character in fiction than Superman as far as I'm concerned. To have someone like James Gunn working so diligently and hard in creating Superman excites me a great deal. That doesn't mean I think he's the perfect human being, that I don't say negative things about him and his process and the way he conducts himself sometimes on social media. If you follow me on Twitter, you can see that my opinions are varied on Gunn and a lot of different people. But I do believe he understands the comic book universe. I understand... I believe he's a nerd, I believe he's a geek, and he gets geek culture. I really do believe that. So I'm not going to throw him in the parapet and say he's not capable of doing something special. He's very capable of doing something special, and he's certainly going to attempt that over at DC. So that excites me. But the ghost of Henry Cavill looms large. I was talking to my sister on the phone this morning. She doesn't know much about geek culture. And she said, how can you replace Henry Cavill? He's such a great Superman. He is a great Superman, but he's not the Superman for James Gunn. And that's finished now. She asked me, could I imagine another actor as Superman? Maybe not at the moment, but I think there is someone out there, another Christopher Reeve, another Henry Cavill, another Brandon Ralph, 
that can take on this mantle beautifully. And I think Henry said it perfectly. The spirit of Superman is still out there and alive and well. He's my favourite character because he always makes me feel safe when I think of him, when I'm thinking, when I'm feeling anxious or my depression or mental health is kicking in, if I think of the word Superman, if I say the word Superman, he makes me feel better and calmer and safer. This is what Superman has always meant to me as a little boy. And now James Gunn has this huge responsibility. This man has gone from Scooby-Doo, the Suicide Squad, and Guardians of the Galaxy and Dawn of the Dead to Superman, the very pinnacle of storytelling. This is the biggest moment in James Gunn's career. And failure is not an option. This has been Friday's edition of the DC Universe Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. This is Movies TV Mad. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye, au revoir, au fidesz!